Hello, everybody. Happy Sunday, y'all. My name is Cassandra Kazor, and it is Songwriter Sunday right now, y'all. So for those of you who are joining for the very first time, uh, this is a show I do Sunday afternoons at 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific for my West Coasters. Happy Sunday, Norm. And all it is, I play a few tunes, I open up for a very special guest, and at quarter after the hour, I call them up and uh, we talk, we hear some of their music, their original music, and we open the floor for, for questions or comments or anything like that. So for those coming back, watching again, thank you so much uh, for your continued viewership. This has been so fun for me. And today, I'm super, super excited because we have an old friend of mine who is absolutely crushing it in every area of his musical life. His name is Nick Mueller, and I'm going to get him up here on the screen at quarter after the hour of whatever time zone you're watching from. And we are going to hear some of his new music from his new album, Colloquies. And we're just going to talk. We're going to talk art. We're going to talk shop. We're going to talk, I don't know, maybe we'll talk about his cat. I don't know. But what I do know is Nick is a wonderful, wonderful composer, arranger, vocalist. I don't know what he doesn't do, to be honest with you. Great pianist. Gives me, you know, actually plays me under the table these days, let's be honest. And with him, as a kind of a special treat, is one of the best bassists I know, Sam Weber. And they will be uh, coming to you from New York City this afternoon. So very, very exciting. Stick with me until 12.15, 2.15, 3.15 from wherever you're watching from. And we're going to get Nick up here. We're going to see Sam as well, hear him play. And uh, yeah, get your, get your pens and pencils ready because this will be a fun one to ask questions during. All right. So until then, I'm going to play you a couple tunes, get you all warmed up for Nick's awesome music. And uh, I'm going to start with uh, one of my, my favorite song about pop culture and social media. Uh, it's called Celebrity. I'm on a rooftop in my favorite onesie, the one that makes my butt look nice. You're on your couch, chilling in sweatpants, browsing the internet. My girls are all around me, we're all drinking mimosas. Looking cute, but we'll be thinner yet. Gotta hit the angles, pick a perfect filter. Not right, not right, that's it. Look at me and my celebrity life. While you're flipping through your phone, I baked a batch of scones. Cause I'm a perfect wife. Look at me and my celebrity style. If I use enough emojis, I can fool you for a while. Look at me. Today I'm gonna show you how to draw a simple wingtip. Consider it a gift from me. Cause you're inherently imperfect. Your eyelashes are too short. So be sure to subscribe. Now I look like Kim and Chloe. I did it in two minutes. Hashtag summer vibes. Gotta hit the angles, pick a perfect filter. Not right, not right. That's it. Look at me and my celebrity life. While you're flipping through your phone, I framed all of these photos. Cause I'm a perfect wife. Look at me and my celebrity style. If I use enough emojis, I can fool you for a while. Look at me. Me. I need more hearts. I need more compliments. I need that guy at work to be impressed. My life's a movie. Mine is a story no one should forget. Look at me and my celebrity life. While you're flipping through your phone, I bought a Peloton, cause I'm a perfect wife. Look at me and my celebrity style. If I use enough emojis, I can fool you for a while. Look at me. Look at me, look at me, look at me. <laughs> All right, y'all.
That's called Celebrity. I wrote it last year, sometime in the summer. Who knows? Been writing a lot of songs uh, in the past year. We all know why. I had a little more time to do the creative work. So my hope is to keep that up. Uh, going back to gig life in May. Very excited for that. But um, yeah, that was actually part of the reason I started to do this Sunday afternoon conversation. This is week 25. So I've talked to 25 really brilliant, hardworking, cool songwriters about what they're up to. We're just going to keep it going. Keep it going until, I don't know, we can't go anymore. But today, my songwriter uh, of the afternoon is Nick Mueller. He's based up in New York City. And he's going to be playing some songs from his new album. Maybe some newer, newer songs. I don't know. We'll see where it takes us. And he's there with uh, the great bassist, Sam Weber. Um, so today, y'all are in for such a treat to see them. Stick with me until... 12.15, 2.15, 3.15, wherever you're watching from. And as always, please don't hesitate to drop a comment uh, wherever you're watching, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, or YouTube. Um, say hey, give some feedback, ask some questions, um, and, I, and I will facilitate as I always do. So hopefully y'all have some thoughts to share today because you guys are going to love Nick's music. It's pretty awesome. All right. For my next uh, song here, I'm going to do my typical mid-set ballad. Um, been sitting with this one a lot lately, so let's let's give it a go. It's called "That's Not Me." I wrote it. I co-wrote it with uh, Chicago songwriter Robin West uh, in the winter, approximately. So this is called uh, "That's Not Me." When I was ten. I spent my playground hours on a bench Trying one more time to find a friend And now I've grown My eyes have gotten clearer and I know The folks you think are keepers leave you more alone And so it seems You only show up What am I to you? A crying shoulder, a punching bag. You think that's me? That's not me. Free of charge. To anyone who asks, I give my heart. But now I'm running out of blood and I'm tired. So it seems you only show up when there's a need. I've had enough. What am I to you? A crying shoulder, a punching bag. You think that's me? That's not me. No. Nope. People say I've changed. They're right. I had to. I'm lonely and wide awake. Morning. Friendship can't be faked. Look at all this hurt I'm holding. I'm evaporating. And so it seems you only show up when there's a need. I've had enough. What am I to you? Crying shoulder, a punching bag. You think that's me? That's not me. <laughs> All right, that's not me. Wrote that over the winter. It's been a hard year. I don't know how you guys are feeling, but. Learned a lot. Learned a lot this year about relationships. <laughs> but don't worry. I only do the sad song in the middle, and I end on a happy song, usually. So for those of you just joining, this is Songwriter Sunday. I'm Cassandra Kaysler, but that's not important. What is important is that um, quarter after the hour, from wherever you're watching, 
So in five short minutes, I'm going to have my old friend, uh, oh yeah, we wrote some music together too, collaborator, we could say, uh, Nick Mueller. And he's gonna be up here on the screen, just a couple minutes talking about his new album. We're gonna talk about whatever comes up. You can also help guide the conversation if you want to. Thank you, Norm. Uh, yeah, that song's growing on me. Thank you. Ah, oh, get it off. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so yes, we're gonna see Nick in just a couple of minutes here. Hang tight. Uh, he's got some great, great music prepared for you. Sam Weber is here also on the bass. So just, I mean, I'm so, I was so tickled to see them both earlier on, uh, on my screen. So you will also be tickled in four minutes when you see them. All right. So for my last tune, before we get to the main event here, I'm going to play something that I wrote back in Kalamazoo where Nick and I met. Um, I don't know if we were roommates yet or what. Maybe. Maybe not. But um, we shared a house with some really cool, really cool creative folk, too. That was like a great period of time in my life. But that's for another thing. I don't know. This is my 15 minutes. I ramble sometimes. I apologize. <laughs> so, all right. This is called uh, Heart Attack. I wrote it back in my early bed. Do I know you, love? You remind me of someone I once wanted in the back of my mind. But I could be wrong, so would you like to play along? I saw you look me up and down. That was just fine. Wait, where are you going? Going, where are you going? Heart attack. I need to keep this, keep this. I need to keep this eye contact, because if I do, you do, I can watch you smile again, and you'll be coming, coming, yeah, you'll be coming, coming back, coming back, coming back, coming back. I think I would like for you to sing to me at night. I think I would like to watch you glowing, crawl into my mind, the next that tastes like wine. And I apologize, cause I can't say a damn thing except where you going, going, where you going, heart attack. I am so sorry. <laughs> my allergies are awful. I need to keep this, keep this, I need to keep this eye contact, cause if I do, you do, I can watch you smile again, yeah, you'll be coming, coming, yeah, you'll be coming, coming back, coming back, coming back, coming back, where you going, where you going, heart attack, where you going, where you going, heart attack, where you going, hey, where you going, Heart attack, where you going? Where you going? Heart attack, where you going? Going, going, heart attack. Where you going? I can watch you smile again and you'll be coming, coming, yeah, you'll be coming, coming back, coming back, coming back, coming back. All right, that is Heart Attack from the old days, from the undergrad. But now, uh, I don't have to kill the last minute. I'm sure he's ready to go. It is time to get Nick Mueller up here on the screen, along with Sam Weber. You get to see them both, it's so exciting. Time for the awkward shuffle and the Skype dance. All right, y'all hang tight while we get Nick up here. Oh, Audrey, thank you for watching. All right, y'all, certified bop. That's what I'm trying. 
I timed it with the ambulance siren, to, you know. Yeah. All right, everybody, buckle up. Here is Nick and Sam. Hello. Hello. Hey. How's it going, guys? Can I choose a background effect? Oh. Hey. Oh. Oh. Whoa. Hey. <laughs> I like it. Can I merge in the back? <laughs> no. All right. Now you <laughs> Oh, I like that Hi. one best. Keep uh, that one. Sounded good, Cassandra. Thank you. Minus the epic cough right there at the end. <laughs> what are you going to do? I'm good. My favorite part was the piano solo. What are you supposed to do? Awesome. So good to see you both. Go yeah. on, get settled over there. All right. Oh, yeah, I should close the windows. Otherwise, we're probably going to have some... Some very loud cars from Fifth Avenue drive by. Oh, I understand. I, I, I closed mine right before I started. And I'm so toasty now. <laughs> but also okay. sirens. Yep. Cool. How are you guys doing today? Great. We, uh, we actually tweaked some sounds uh, since we saw you just like an hour ago. Cool. Should we, should we, should we make a couple noises just to make sure? That sounds okay on that end. Sure, vocals are sounding clearer actually. So. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. I am behind a uh, pop filter here, so. <laughs> actually, let me try and lower this so that you can see my face. To some... <laughs> Get back there. I know it. I like want to listen to that every night before I fall asleep. It's like atmospheric sound. It's beautiful. Cool. Well, happy Sunday. Um, so Nick, uh, I said a little bit about you, but um, yeah, would you mind telling the folks who don't know you uh, as well as me, uh, perhaps a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, I am originally from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I have been living in Brooklyn for the past five years. Uh, writing songs more or less my whole life. Uh, it's kind of been my passion project to keep the creativity going throughout the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And uh, so um, I started consistently releasing recordings like uh, 2019, though. So um, I guess you could say this this current project that Sam is Sam has played all of these tunes on is called Culture and Flames. That's the name of the band. Um, uh, but I'm primarily a jazz pianist. Uh, that's what I was doing most of, I guess, when, when we were together uh, in Kalamazoo, Cassandra. And, mm -hmm. and then in New York, I spent a handful of years uh, leading this free jazz session and... Um, Sam actually started playing that with me, um, and then it kind of turned into this great community of musicians who would come and sit in week to week. Uh, that was a project called Film Play, where we played free jazz music to silent film on a projector screen behind us. Awesome. Uh, that was very fun. And uh, But now I'm just kind of just keeping the uh, songwriting going. Uh, and so... We're going to do, uh, hopefully, if we have some time, five tunes today, two songs from the last record, two songs from the upcoming record, and then maybe a premiere, if we have time, of a new, a new tune I wrote this week. Excellent. Excellent. Well, let's go ahead and kick it off with one of those songs so we can get to, to chatting as well. Awesome. Uh, this song is called The Other Side. After sharing uh, my last album, colloquies I had a lot of people tell me this was kind of their favorite so this uh, this I guess is a, a standout um, one two three four You think you've heard it all before 
It ain't much fun feeling this way. Gotta get some sun and find some empty space. I'm turning green, you see. I'm here in the dark. And now I know just how. Fantastic. Uh, Audrey and Norm both send their their uh, love of the song over via the chat. So. Oh, thanks, Audrey. And Norm, is that yeah, what you said? Yeah, Audrey. Uh, Audrey's a great uh, songwriter, cellist here in Chicago. She's oh, great. Her. She has a very impressive uh, resume. And then, uh, yeah, Norm is uh, my husband John's dad, but he was a professor of theory for his whole life. So we've got some, awesome. some big music people listening here today. Well, thank you for listening. Thanks, Audrey. Yeah, awesome. Uh, yeah, that is jammy and beautiful and and so uh, uh, textural. A lot of colors there. I expect no less from you, really. But um, <laughs> excellent. So good to hear you both live for the first time in so long. Um, yeah. So, yeah, thanks. Yeah, of course. So let's go into kind of a good introductory kind of thing for folks who don't know you as well. Again, um, who who do you listen to? Who do you admire? Like kind of who... On a night off, are you just kind of jamming to at home going, ooh, I just really love that sound? Mm. 
kind of like uh, singer songwriters from like 60s, 70s. Um, I'm a big fan of Nick Drake. Mm. Uh, and like 90s rock, I listen to Elliot Smith probably more than I should. Oh boy. Uh, okay? And uh, Joni Mitchell, uh, Joan Baez. Mm. Um, Paul Simon, uh, yeah, kind of like classic singer songwriters. I try and stay in that vein. I don't try to, I just find myself kind of, you know, ending up there, uh, as well as, as well as jazz, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm always, you know, listening for harmonies and so jazz fascinates me, always has, you know, and I'm always trying to improve my jazz game so i listen to a lot of jazz artists as well who uh who in the we can we can go to jazz because obviously that informs your writing um who are, mm-hmm. you, who are you excited about uh who are you standing in the jazz field <laughs> uh well people that are probably um sounding like the most unique and interesting to me right now are uh well i also like pianists because you know i'm I'm always listening to piano players. Um, Tigran Hamasyan uh, is this awesome Armenian uh, musician, kind of freakazoid, can do it all and uh, perform harmonically and technically on and rhythmically on a whole nother level that most people can't. <laughs> I think just listening to him kind of uh, Im- improves my musical game just, just by listening to him. Um, I mean, Brad Meldow is my favorite pianist. I, I feel like he's he's a big influence. Um, of Fred Hirsch, of as well. And I had the pleasure of studying with Fred a little bit. Um, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'll have to check out the uh, the Armenian artist, but I I'm a big fan of of everyone else there too. Um, let's talk about fusion. Then. I don't know if you wanted to call your music fusion, but you're clearly fusing different elements of different genres, right? So, mm. and we haven't had, I haven't had anybody um, on this conversation yet on this show um, who's doing kind of what you're doing in terms of the incorporation of some of the jazz harmonies and, and, and things like that. So how do you think about that in the context of songwriting? When I'm songwriting, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to do anything that's been done before <laughs> I, I'm always uh, kind of searching for um, just whatever sounds cool to me I don't know I guess that turns into fusion but um, uh, since harmony is such a deep well that uh, you know most popular music doesn't tap deeply enough I think you know I I'm always searching for for ways to introduce things that sound nice, but maybe are a little more complicated than you might think on the surface Mm -hmm. um, by listening to it. Uh, Yeah, you know, as well as, you know, meters, you know, rhythm is 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 a huge part of making harmony sound a certain way. Uh, So... Um, I try not to be too genre specific when I'm writing. Uh, I try to just, uh, do my own thing. And I, and I think I'm always just figuring that out a little bit more and more, you know, as I'm going along, figuring out what my thing is. But now it's starting, it's starting to become clear to me like, oh, these are the things that I like to do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even, you know, several years ago and then now again, I listened to part of the new album, but I also wanted to, like, be surprised a little bit in real time. Um, I will say something consistent with you that I really love. Um, you know, if we think about sound like like an artist's palette, you know, what you're saying with uh, certainly some parts of pop or other genres, too, here is yellow and here is orange and here is blue. But I really see, uh, I hear watercolors with your songs. And I think yeah, I, w- I want to. I, d- I want to find a, a new color. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to find a color that nobody knows what it is. 
Sounds like we all need to go uh, go on a camping trip and, and see what happens. Just kidding. <laughs> that would be so awesome. <laughs> uh, I get to make jug, uh, drug jokes because things are legal here in Illinois. But um, awesome, beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that one. So that's other side. Um, yeah. And then you said it's uh, colloquies. Is the em emphasis on the first syllable? Um, it's a word that I've never actually heard in any other context like spoken Co colloquies colloquies that's why i, I want to say it right kind of similar colloquies anyways it means like a it means the plural of soliloquy or soliloquies so it's mm -hmm. uh it's about a gathering uh gathering of discussions on um basically theological perspectives cool is what it means i can see that with that song as well so we're going to come back to lyrics soon um Audrey yeah. is also down for this songwriting nature quest. Okay, where we find a, your new color. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's beautiful. I love the way you said that. So, yeah, let's get into lyrics after your next song. Uh, what do you have coming up for us? Uh, well, this this next song actually is a lyric that I can't entirely claim to be my own. Uh, what it started from an Emily Dickinson poem, mm. uh, and most of the words are hers, though I've kind of reformatted them a bit into what works for a song. Okay. Um, so this song is called Solitary Hills from an Emily Dickinson poem. Awesome.
beautiful. Oh my gosh, how awesome. Um, why, yeah, so besides the obvious um, beauty of that poem, what drew you to it? Mm. So I feel like Emily Dickinson, like in her poetry, taps into our disconnect with nature a bit. And, or, you know, that was like, I think at, when she was writing those poems, it was like at the start of, I think, that movement happening with the, you know, in, in the Industrial Revolution. And, the, and she was such a gardener, like, she didn't talk to anybody. She like just connected with nature, <laughs> you know, and, and her poems like really capture for me a strong essence of what um, our connection with nature could be, maybe should be. And uh, uh, well, this song, you know, I was kind of I was reading her a lot of her poetry at the time and I was kind of searching for a lyric or inspiration for a lyric song, you know, how can I how can I uh, make an ode to nature or, or make a song that is an ode to nature? And I just decided to go with this lyric, this poem. Yeah. Awesome. So we do need to do the songwriting nature quest and find the magical. <laughs> that's what we need to do. No, that's, that's fantastic. So in terms of, um, you know, obviously lyrics are poetry in their own right. How do you think about words when you pen them? Uh, each song is different. Sometimes I will start with like, um, um, a harmonic mood or maybe it's just a melody and that like, I have an idea somewhere in the back of my head, like what the theme of the song could be. Usually with those types of songs, I don't ever really know what the song really is about though, until I... I get like a first, you know, just um, uh, Peter Eldridge calls it word vomit, <laughs> like get get a, an initial word vomit down and then like edit, 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 edit. Then I'm like, oh, this is what that song is about. That was the thing in the back of my head that I couldn't, you know, uh, figure out. But I knew that's where the harmony was coming from. And then some songs, you know, I, I have a, I have a, a, you know, my songwriting journal here that I is I rely on for performances too much. I have a hard time memorizing my lyrics, I think, because I just, I finish one song and I move on to the next without fully committing it to memory. Um, Understandable. <laughs> yeah, but I, you, you know, I'm, I'm always, you know, jotting down ideas. And so some songs, yeah, will start from, you know, a poem. Actually, uh, I went on a walk like last week and at the end of my walk like I jotted down this poem that came to mind and then I didn't know what I was going to use the words for until Monday night I actually finished the song um and uh so that's a brand new one that I finished that, that you know like started from words and I so you asked what is what am I trying to do when I pen them uh, I'm definitely trying to be abstract a bit. Uh, um, yeah, I guess that's all I'll say. No, that's fine. That's <laughs> and I'll let the words speak for themselves. Yeah, no, that's that's just fine. There's no right answers to these questions. That's why every week I, I just keep asking because um, maybe coming back to kind of the your relationship with words component of the conversation, you know, we've got degrees in music. At least I feel... Like, I'm like, I can, I can do music. That's something I know how to do. But writing words for me, I don't have a degree. I never took any classes. I didn't have a mentor. I did, you know, I just love words. And so mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of where that question was coming from, too, because I'm curious about, you know, we all have relationships with words because we have to speak to be human. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I think how we think about them matters. Um, because I found out in the last year of like a lot of deep journaling, I really want to just write books. So that's part of that question too. Um, so I'm just curious about each artist's kind of relationship to their words. So I, I really appreciate you kind of digging deep for that, that response. Um, 
Okay, I know you have three more, and I want to hear them. So what's next? This song is called Get It. very groovy too um i just did a quick flip through your uh, spotify catalog where can we listen to that one this one is going to be a new song coming up on an ep in june that's called da D the ep will be literally called uh, a da and uh and then i'm going to release uh, an ep in july that's going to be called dot dot um I'm going to release an EP in August that's going to be called Dot Dot Dot. And then I'm going to release my next album 
this song will be on it and, and a bunch of other ones. That's going to be called the dotted line dot, 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 dot. Cool. Excellent. So you have a ton of songs coming down the pipes right now. Yeah, I actually, yesterday I was in uh, Cold Spring, New York at a friend's place. I was recording vocals and laid down uh, the vocals yesterday for the first two EPs. And uh, that went really well. I'm pretty excited about it. Whoa, that's so awesome. That's so exciting. So, so will the three EPs then snowball into the album or is the album separate creatively? Yeah, all of the songs, uh, all of the songs uh, on the EPs will be on the album. Wow. And will there be a difference like um, between them or like a remastering process? Or There's going to be a couple twists that I have in mind, uh, but I'm, not, I'm honestly not sure yet. <laughs> that's fine. No, that's so exciting. That's wonderful. Um, I mean, why not? Uh, so usually, so... <laughs> okay, so... Um, Audrey, who is watching, she just released an EP a couple months ago when I interviewed her, and I've been complaining about recording vocals. She goes, who is this dude who feels good about laying down vocals? Um, <laughs> please teach, okay, so teach us how we can lay down all those vocals in one session for those of us who suffer the whole time. Oh my gosh. Uh, I will admit recording vocals is so hard. Uh, you think like, oh, it's just like a three to five minute song. Like I can get it done. And no, for anybody who does not record out there, it takes like over an hour to feel good. At least, you know, <laughs> if you're like really good, it it takes, you know, maybe an hour to three hours sometimes to feel good about tracking like one song. Oh, tips. I don't have any tips. Um, you just have like magical vocal cords, I think. Yeah, uh, I've I've kind of gotten to a point where I'm I'm a little bit like you know like I'm just gonna be myself, and I don't I'm I'm trying to care less and less about what it sounds like. So I I had four hours. I knew that I had to record six tunes in four hours because I didn't have the time or the money to keep paying for any other way of getting it done so i just had to do it ah so perhaps yeah the urgency as well but you do have a beautiful voice and i know you've worked really really hard on on you've always had a beautiful voice but knowing you you've always worked hard on everything you've done to get yourself to a place where you could go into a studio and just put down whatever you need to put down as well so definitely a combination of just what you got and and really hard work knowing what i know about oh it. yeah yeah hard work is uh, not to be forgotten. Yes. My, my major in college was kind of half jazz piano, half jazz voice. And uh, I, I honestly uh, kind of stopped singing jazz when I moved to New York and just kind of played jazz on piano um, and just kind of turned my focus in singing on whatever it is that I wanted to my songs to sound like so I will admit like you know the, kind of the only singing I've done in the last few years was working out what I wanted my tunes to sound like and not other people's tunes that's cool that's really cool I really really admire that um okay I have so many things so one of these days we'll we'll do a separate show where we talk about all the times we like stayed too late at Dalton and <laughs> the security guards so we could practice late but oh yeah there's a lot of stories <laughs> But at this point in the show, I like to ask my artist, who is you, um, what can people do to support you, support your art? Uh, tell us everything. Okay, so I just launched a Patreon literally today. If you don't know what Patreon is, it is a really awesome platform that is kind of flipping the whole uh, business model of um, supporting art on its head in uh, setting up, uh, you know, you can sign up for a subscription model for a given artist. All, you know, so many things are turning to subscription models now. Um, but the thing is that you don't realize, you know, and just paying a small subscription fee for like your, you know, your Spotify service or whatever it is that you listen on, like, like none of the money actually goes to the artist. Mm -hmm. I say none 
with a grain of salt, uh, because well, literally it's it is a grain of salt that ends up getting back to the artist. Anyways, Patreon um, is going to be a platform where I'm going to be releasing updates on my music and uh, like previews of what's coming up. There's also a really exciting package. Uh, the VIP package includes like cool band merch. You can get like a sticker and a t-shirt and a handbag. And um, there's there's basically, you know, a few different options for you to pay as low as one dollar a month. Uh, and for one dollar a month, you're going to get access to like exclusive uh, live streams and um, updates for what I'm working on on a regular basis. And and then you can kind of choose what you pay above that. Awesome. Uh, but uh, it is, I, I encourage you to check it out and check out other artists on Patreon as well. Yep. So the link tree, I'm pointing awkwardly in the direction of the link tree. I'm not just making a weird gesture at you. <laughs> so the link tree is up there. You can get Nick's Patreon and all the other social medias, websites, Bandcamp, all that cool stuff. Yeah. Um, if you if you do listen to music on Spotify or, or like Apple Music, whatever. I I get it. I have I have a Spotify, but like follow the artist too. So if you could give me a follow, it it takes nothing, just a click. That would be awesome if you could follow me on Spotify and or join my mailing list, whatever whatever you're comfortable with. Absolutely. Um, I want to extend the same question to Sam because we got Sam Weber here as well. Uh, one of the greatest bassists I've ever had the pleasure of you know waving at in the hallway. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, any, anything you want to say as well, Sam? Well, can you hear me talking for one thing? Uh, it's a little muffly, but yeah. Uh, maybe I'll... That's better. Vaccinated, don't worry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Internet. Um, <laughs> I don't actually have any of my own music out in the world right now, but uh, there's a discography on my website, which is www.samwebermusic.com that has links to everybody that I play with um, and which actually, is a lot of people. which is a lot of people, including Nick. Um, I mean, there's so many people in Brooklyn that are making lots of great music and I'm lucky to be part of a cool community that, you know, lets me play with them all the time. Um, <clears throat> but all those artists are worth supporting on their own. And you can also support me indirectly by listening to their music, going to their band camps, going to their Spotify, whatever. Uh, it's all there on my website. So I think that's the best way for me awesome. or like be my friend on Facebook or Instagram or something. I don't know. Awesome. I put your yeah. website in the chat, too, so people can Thank see you. that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sam. It's so good to hear you as well. Um, well, I think we have time for one more. If anybody wants to sneak in a question, now's a good time to drop it in the chat while we listen to this next song. But otherwise, what are you guys feeling for your last tune? Oh, song one? Yeah. Do one. I don't want to do the new one. Let's do the new one. You want right. to do the new one? Yeah, so this is a song. This was the song that I was mentioning. I, I finished on Monday this week. Uh, one of my... One of my philosophies is always to show up creatively, you know, like you're not going to, Hey, if anybody's wondering like how to be an artist, you're not going to be an artist unless you show up with new creative material. Anytime there's anything that you need to show up for. So, uh, anytime I have a show live, virtual, whatever, I write a new song for it. So I, I wrote the song on Monday. This is, the first time I will have ever done it with another musician, let alone <laughs> a performance. So uh, anyways, this song is called Dotted Lines on Dimple Street.
We got to keep our eyes peeled for da and da da. And, and da da da. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So go ahead, pop up to that link tree, everybody, so you can follow Nick and his music. Um, I'm going to give some quick shout outs here. More people are watching than, than commented, so I can only call out a few of y'all. But thank you, Norm, for watching. Uh, he says, super good music. Love this episode. Um, Audrey sends her, uh, her uh, claps as well. Yep. Audrey is also a great cellist and songwriter. I encourage you all to connect. Richard is watching. <laughs> Richard is also a great songwriter. What's up, Richard? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of wonderful musicians here watching today. So thank you guys for watching. And thank you, Nick. And thank you, Sam, so much for taking the time to be here, share your music. And um, yeah, let's, let's yeah. chat more soon. Yeah, thank you so much, Cassandra, for having us and doing this. Uh, it's really awesome that you're you're doing this to support other artists and get the word out and and you know it's you're you're crushing it you're killing it pleasure and, is seriously all mine this is like the highlight of my week i swear yeah. so you guys stay well stay safe uh we'll catch up soon and have a great rest of your sunday okay yeah you too okay thanks bye guys all right my lovely songwriter sunday folks who are still watching thank you for watching today again that was nick mueller and on the bass was Sam Weber. If you don't know him, you should know him. If you don't know Nick, you must know Nick. Um, everybody go connect. It's important. Uh, so next week, we have yet another episode of Songwriter Sunday. Same time, same platform, wherever you prefer to watch. I have Chicago-based uh, singer-songwriter Megan Hickman coming on to the show. She's putting out a new album. I insist you come meet her. She's beautiful. She's talented. Um, this is going to be a great one as well. So thank you for your continued viewership. And for those of you who feel comfortable commenting, thanks for interacting a bit too. So there's Nick's link tree. I can touch it. Boop. Okay. And um, as always, stay in touch. Uh, so grateful here. So I'll see you next Sunday, 2 p.m. Central, 12 Pacific, 3 Eastern. Y'all just stay well out there, okay? Bye. <laughs>